Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 2 episode number 11 and 12 reaction. All right, uh the previous episode, uh the previous two episodes. Uh the first thing that happened was Korra uh was trying to go like you know, Korra came back to Tenzin and like you know, she apologized and everything and then she was like okay, I need to go to the spirit world. So you need to take me there Tenzin decided to try to take her there but unfortunately he did not have the talent for it and he's been trying to do that for a long time in the end we get to know that Jinora is the one who is more who has more affinity towards uh spirits and she was the one who actually uh, decided to take Korra to the spirit world while in the meantime uh in Republic City uh Marco tries to convince uh, what's his name Bolin and uh, Asami that Varric is behind everything. They don't believe him. And then in the by the end of after that, Varric kind of threatens him in a weird way. <laughs> and then he gets arrested by Varric's men. Now that was that. And then like in the next episode, we get uh like you know, like we get to see the spirit world where Korra and Jinora is there. They kind of get separated and Korra meets um Iroh there. And we get to know that Iroh has been living there after, you know, like after he finished his like you know job and he wanted to go back to uh, not go back sorry he wanted to go to the spirit world and just hang out there so he left his body and he has come here and he has been living here from that moment and it was nice to see uh iroh back and he kind of gave uh Cora a little bit of advice you know and like kind of helped her up out with her troubles and Cora was able to learn quite a few things she went off on her way to help the little bird spirit she helped it out and she like you know the light inside her and everything all that stuff happened while Jinora got into the library and that owl sold her out because apparently uh, Unlock has been helping the owl anyways <laughs> and Jinora has been taken hostage Korra goes there Korra has a little thing with uh, you know like uh, what's, what's his name Rava Rava yeah no, not Rava, sorry, uh, Vatu, sorry, Vatu, you know, like, Korra meets Vatu, and, like, you know, then Unalak threatens her, this and that, she is able to get out of there, unfortunately, Jinora isn't, and Tenzin is concerned, obviously, so, yeah, let's see what happens, this episode, this is episode number uh, 11 of The Legend of Korra, book 2, so, yeah, let's start, so, I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here, think it whichever is your preference, and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay. Night of a thousand stars. Oh yeah, they I don't think they know about Jinora. Yep. Oh no. Oh, wait. Aren't they not supposed to move her? The spirit is going to come in the same place after it comes back into the our world. With the whole thing with Anne, you remember in season one? Oh boy. This is true. Oh, Bolin. <laughs> oh my god. Except you. Uh. 
Oh boy. No. <coughs> no, I don't think so. I think there's something written there or something. All right, you know, well, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I don't think so. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What the? Okay. I don't think so. Nah. <laughs> Sanity defense. Oh boy. Oh god. I think they should have waited, you know. But I guess uh, the harmonic convergence, but they don't know about it, so. Ah. Uh. Uh, I still think they should have waited, you know, a little bit more. We'll see. Let's wait. Oh, this, the heroes are here. Here you go. Nuck Duck and Ginger, I think that's her name. My God, <laughs> she's like... Uh. Oh, that's a. Oh, oh my God, you nasty. <sighs> Buttercup, what? Oh, boxing thing. Oh. Yeah. God, the flattery, Varric. Yeah, you. Oh, yeah, the people, the mass, what are they going to say, you know? Like, even if the president doesn't want, the people, let's see what the people says. What the, what's that? Wait, they have cake? What? <laughs> My God. Yeah, all those haters, you know? The haters. <laughs> I don't think he can speak, but... <laughs> oh no. Here we go. Oh boy. Ah. Mm. He's going for the masses, as I said, you know, the people.
Destiny. What? What was that? Hypnotism or something? <laughs> oh my god, they're doing this. Okay. <laughs> yep, they're doing this. Of course I will. Hmm. Isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, like bowling can understand, like, you no know, fame, money, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, like family is the more important thing. He can understand it now. We can, we can see him. What is wrong? Yo, you guys! Yeah, and choke and die, you know? Like, that'll be good. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. For just lazing around doing nothing and you know wasting time oh boy and accusing others yeah that uh, that as well oh my god <laughs> that rhymed oh naga and babu whoa whoa <laughs> <laughs> the editing <laughs> the editing look at the editing but for, for, for their time it's good <laughs> nice oh my <laughs> oh no Judy Oh my god. I mean, Babu's acting pretty well, I can, I can say. Like, look at him. <laughs> oh, just the editing. The tail is still moving. Yeah, he's not having fun. Yeah, Marcos. No, Marco's not here. Yeah, that's not what's bothering him. You're spoiling it. Uh. Hmm. There you go. He's understanding the importance. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, it's the, the infiltrating, that thing. Oh no, yo, be safe. Oh my god. Ah, the cake! Huh. Oh. Wait, they're after the president? Wait a minute, so Varit... Those are not Varit... I... Oh my god! Wait, whose people are these? Oh damn! Whoa! Real life 
demonstration you can see there you go ooh that Wait, is this also part of Varric's plan? I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Damn, Bolin. The muscles. You know what? I really wouldn't be surprised if this is actually Varric's plan. It's like, he, he like did a fake kidnapping, orchestrated a fake kidnapping just so that Bolin can be there and you know, help them out. So that the whole reputation and everything like just look at it how the whole thing is sinking the movie and bowling both of them oh my god i think this is varic's plan Ooh! yep Oh my god, yeah. This is Varric's plan. But why did he say Varric's name? Oh, okay, they, they spoke. Okay. You know that. Oh god! Like, I think, like, Varric planned this, obviously I knew it from the, like, you know, so that, now, here's what I'm thinking, did he do this deliberately knowing that he's going to get arrested, just so that it could have more of an impact, and they really go and help out Republic City? That would be kind of insane. If he actually sac decided, I don't think he decided to sacrifice himself knowingly. The guy probably just spoke under pressure. Oh god, here we go. Unalak is here. Oh my god. Ju what, what was her name? Ju Juji? Oh, so... But I thought he was trying to... Yeah, and he's un behind bars now, unfortunately. Oh my god, what the? But, but okay. Um. The hell? Okay, Ginger. Oh, Cora's here. I really hope he listens this time. I think he will. Yeah. And we have everyone, Tenzin and everyone here to vouch for us. What? What? Oh my god! Yeah, I'll be safe at least. And yourself. He's going, not going to listen. The people. If the people say, if the people, the people, the normal people, the citizens, they need to say something. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, she doesn't know the whole thing with Asami. 
Oh my god, I can smell more drama coming. <laughs> yes. I still have something to say about Varg. I think that was not his plan. There you go. Hmm. There you go. And where are those two cops that were just stuffing their mouth? Rash there you go. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh wait. Wait, what the? Wait, when? Oh, I, I guess. No. When they're fighting? Yeah, I'm like... Maybe she forgave him. Oh, the amnesia! Wait, she forgot that? Wait, so from where did she forget? Oh my god. Yo, Marco! This guy! This is, Marco is currently my, the, the character that I don't, oh, wait, what? <laughs> I think his, his plan was... I think he knew what he's doing. He's kind of sacrificed himself for the... Yeah. <laughs> they don't even have any. Hmm. And also, President Raiko. <laughs> no, no. The the whole thing with Raiko. No, no, no. There you go. He just. Oh my god. Okay, it's safe at least. Wait, what? <laughs> What? Um. Which one? <laughs> Yay! Uh, are we going to just? Brush over the whole Marco thing. Uh, wait, so there. What the hell is even happening here? Oh boy, it won't work. These are spirits. Ah, oh my god. S kind death not. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. I know he's baiting you to go with him. Oh. <clears throat> Um, okay. Okay, oh my god.
Great. Whoa! Okay. Oh no, he just... Damn, the... Ooh, he's dodging pretty well. Nice reflexes. Just look at that. Oh, ho, ho. oh he got him. That's... Oh! Oh no. Is he like freezing him? Yeah, he froze him. Wow, he's sweating. What the? Ah. Yes. It's going to whoop you up so bad that you'll probably think twice before doing something else. Um, all right. So this episode, this is episode number 11. Yeah, 11 of book two. Now, okay. So first of all, the whole um, Genora situation. Uh, Emma. She, uh, like, you know, they, they come to, uh, un, uh, what's his name? Denzin, I forgot his name for a second. Denzin and everyone just came and, like, you know, like, Pema got to know. Jinora is currently still unconscious in the spirit world. And, yeah, they're going to bring her back. While Marco is in prison. And <laughs> Bolin comes there and Bolin is like, oh, like, I'm just one of those people, you know. And don't you worry, you know, like I am going to get you out. I'm going to use my power of money and fame after <laughs> the success of the mover to get you out of this quickly. It's a bit sad that you wouldn't be able to go there and watch my mover, watch me becoming a star. But, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. I'm going to get you out. And it was nice, like, you know, they had a little conversation. And this is the one thing that I like about Bolin, like, you know, he... <laughs> Like, you know, this, like I could see like this whole thing, you know, this whole mover thing kind of tried to show us how Bolin became this type of a person who was just like, you know, focusing on the money and fame part where he kind of became uh, a little bit obsessed with it and kind of forgotten about his own brother and family. I try, I think like they tried to do it in that manner, but the way Bolin talks and the way he acts and everything, you know, it it didn't feel like it at all. Like, you know, he was not arrogant about it and at, like, you know, at any way, like, you know, his arrogant, the, the way he kind of showed that, oh, like, you know, I'm better than everybody. That was so funny and hilarious that it didn't feel as if he was bragging. It, it just felt like a, like, you know, comedic situation. You know, whenever he kind of said that, Oh, like, you know, look at me. <laughs> I'm better. The way he kind of expressed that and said that was really comedic. And that's why I feel like the arrogance did not come out. And, you know, like, it, it, it is just bowling, you know, like, he is <laughs> just like that. He, he's just like this type of a funny type of a character who is just, you know, like, if, even if he tries to be arrogant, he just... Like, you know, he just, he, just, he just does it in a weird way, which kind of makes us laugh. So this whole thing, and we can see like, you know, the way he kind of, like, you know, kind of was talking with her brother, his brother. And, uh, you know, he was a little bit, kind of a little bit prideful, but at the same time, he was still concerned about him. He was like, okay, I'm going to get you out, don't worry, and all that. And <laughs> the whole conversation was funny, and <laughs> when Marco was trying to say like, oh, Vary did this, he's like, oh, the insanity defense or whatever. That'll work, that might work, you know, you, you, you can try it. <coughs> oh my god that was something and okay so now here's the thing the main plan of Varric was to get help uh, not help as per se but to get uh, the president involved in this to get Republic City involved in this and you know like help get, get reinforcement all that stuff for it and that's why he was doing this mover you know to do like you know to kind of 
move the mass and make it easy for the president to not easy but you know kind of convince the president to help them out and you know fight against Unalak. that was his main plan and obviously his business was another thing you know it, it's going to help out his business and all so it was like two birds at one stone something like that so that was like his plan and bolin bolin was like you know kind of not i wouldn't say used because he himself got a lot of fame and like you know i'm sure he earned quite a lot <laughs> in the movie uh, mover uh so i wouldn't say that he was used but he was kind of like a like you know a player which he uh just uh, i don't want to say the word used you know i'm i'm he he kind of uh yeah you know what uh let's just i, I didn't, didn't want to say the way word used because uh, as i said bolin himself kind of got a few advantage from these as well so he was not completely used but yeah he was he did not know as to what uh Varys actual plan was so in that ma manner if you think about it he was used for his own goal for Varys' own goal but still it helped him out in quite a few other ways as we see you know like now uh bolin is now famous bolin has um uh, like you know like uh money as well i'm sure as i said like you know he did these things so i'm sure he earned quite a bit and everyone knows him he's he, he's pretty happy with everything so he also kind of benefited in a way so i wouldn't say he was used but yeah in if you think of it that way vag did use him for his own goals so <clears throat> that was that okay um now we get to the next scene where we see Ton Rock, I think that was his name, uh, Korra's dad. He was planning to just go and attack. Now I did say like you know they should have waited, and in, we did we see in the end that the spirits and everything they were attacking and all, and we can see how difficult is that it is for them to fight the spirits. So that's why I guess like you know like for Ton Rock, I guess it was a long time that Korra went and is not still coming up with reinforcement so he got impatient but yeah he still should have waited you know uh, going to fight them alone like that is didn't work out <clears throat> okay um so now we get to the mover and uh president raiko comes in with his wife and uh varik is like oh hello welcome and you know like uh like and uh, oh, uh, Raiko says that you even if you try to show me this, it wouldn't work. I wouldn't uh, arrange for reinforcements. Varric here. Now here's the thing. Um, Varric. I thought like Varric was trying to kind of move the mass. You know, like the people that are here. I thought he was trying to do that. He was going to show us this amazing performance. You know, uh, and he was going to focus more on the whole Republic city helping out uh, the Water Tribe that thing he was going to kind of focus on the people would see it the people will be like oh my god this is so amazing and like you know like they'll be like yeah the president should help them and like you know when the, when the people say obviously the president will have to reconsider his decision and i thought that was what varik was trying to do now turns out there was another part of the plan here and during the mover he was trying to like, you know, do like the whole kidnapping thing, trying to kidnap Raiko and blame it on the water tribe and say that, oh, this is happening. So we should go and move our, you know, like army and help try to get the president back. And in that manner, he was going to, uh, like, you know, somehow get control of the army, General Iroh and everyone. And... They were going to say like, yeah, we're going to save the president, but at the same time, they were going to also like, you know, participate in the war. I guess that was his plan. And uh, <clears throat> now I did think this was a little bit different what his plan was. I thought he was planning in a more, um, what do you call it? In a more um, ah, different way. For example, uh, the guys, like, you know, those, those uh, criminals, those kidnappers or whatever they come in and <clears throat> they you know like bowling gets to see that you know bowling kind of gets kind of 
sees them like you know doing their stuff and he gets alerted he gets in when they were almost kidnapping the president and her wife bowling comes stops them they go to the main stage and start fighting and the way the whole them fighting and the movie also kind of you know kind of playing at the background and the people were seeing like you know the movie and the real life fight also happening and you know they they would see like you know bowling winning and everything i thought varik was planning that varik was planning to do that and the people would be more hyped up more motivated and they would be like yeah like we like you know we should definitely help them with reinforcements and stuff and the president will be forced to help them out because he himself was also going to get kidnapped if bolin didn't come in he would have gotten so the pressure would be more on him to help uh, you know the, them out to help cora out so i think i thought vag was trying to do that because the way the movie was completely synced with the way bolin was fighting irl uh, with those uh, kidnappers i was thinking vag was planning that and then when you know like he just blurts out that oh varik hired us and varik gets like you know arrested i thought wait a minute is this also part of his plan that he actually tried to like you know give this like more of an impact by himself getting arrested or something and bolin being the sole hero of this and you know like bolin would then like you know because of his influence the normal citizens would probably rise up and they would uh pressure the president to help out um you know to help out uh cora so i was thinking of like you know so many things in that direction you know sound it was nothing like that it was a simple like it would have been like you know, kind of interesting if he actually kind of planned all of this and made it seem as if you know like this was an actual kidnapping attempt while kind of like, you know going for a different outcome where the people themselves after seeing this was going to get hyped up and they were going to put pressure on the president if this was something like that uh, it would have been like a more of a, what can i say like it would have been an amazing twist twist i wouldn't say but an interesting like you know way this uh, could have gone um like you know like uh, varik would be we would see how like you know varik would be more intelligent in that but i guess it was nothing like that it was nothing complicated like that he was just simply trying to kidnap the president to kind of make the army you know move and he failed at that so yeah it's something like that but okay so yeah as we see like you know as i said like you know the whole thing we kind of see like the the, the characters uh, the, the kidnappers they come in they try to get the president unable to do that <laughs> Oh, uh, while, while in the meantime, Bolin also kind of understood, as I said, after like, you know, sitting here and seeing the mover and whatever, he, he realized how important family is. And he was like, yeah, like, I don't like this. Like, you know, my brother is not here with me. And yeah, I, I should have, like, you know, like he, he kind of feels bad. And then, and, and then he kind of goes out. Asami comes and kind of you know, comforts him and that's when he sees the kidnappers and as we saw after that what happened you know like bowling goes there saves the president and the guy the ones who varik had hired just blurts out varik's name now i still don't uh you know like i don't know i still like have this like a little suspicion i feel like this is this was part of varik's plan you know the guy actually blurting out varik's name was extremely unusual because i don't think varik is a type of person who would hire a person who has who is so so who just talks so easily like bolin just asked him uh, he was threatening him but still just asked him and he just blurted out varik's name so i don't know i feel like that was also part of varik's plan so i still think that is another one of his hidden plan or something where he was going to get arrested but at the same time like you know the president would be under pressure or something i don't know so who knows like I, I feel it extremely weird the way that whole thing happened the guy just blurted out everything he wasn't even being interrogated he was just like you know bolin just kind of threatened him and asked him who hired you and he just says it like i feel that it's extremely weird like i feel like varik would actually choose his men properly like oh i don't know like why did he choose a person like that who just blurted everything out like that now oh god 
and and now as we can see like you know the citizens and everyone are just so very hyped up after seeing Bolin's performance and everything ginger is just swooning ginger is like oh my god what an amazing thing and i'm pretty sure she's <laughs> she's just like you know because the people are hyped up she was also kind of like you know going along with the flow so who knows what will what will come uh like you know what's going to happen to ginger and bolin's relationship like we kind of got to see that whole situation where he just jumped on top of bolin after seeing her his performance so i don't know we'll see what happens and uh yeah now Barry gets arrested. Julie also gets arrested alongside him. <laughs> and Cora comes in. Cora is like President Raiko. We need your help. Uh, Tenzin, uh, like, you know, the three brothers, Tenzin, uh, Bumi, and uh, not three brothers, what am I saying? Three siblings. Tenzin, Bumi, and Kaya, all of them are there. And he's like, we need your help. Now, now here's the thing. I don't understand. Like, I can understand one thing. It is like a huge political situation if he actually moves his army. You know, like he, he's the president and he cannot move his army just like that. Just because a few people just asked for his help, he cannot move a nation's army. You know, like even if Korra is the avatar, you know, he cannot do that, I guess, if you think of it in that way. But at the same time, this is like going to, towards a whole war situation. So I think he should have helped Korra out, especially since Korra is also an avatar. So it really is like a problematic situation. If the avatar is asking for your help, you know, like the avatar wouldn't just like, you know, ask for your help if like, you know, if I don't know, like for a um, like, like, you know, like for a sibling squabble or whatever in like, you know, like uh, <laughs> she wouldn't just come and ask for a help like that. This is like a huge situation. Technically, it is a sibling squabble, like <laughs> Unalak and <laughs> uh, Tonrock. Yeah, I always forget his name. It is a sibling squabble if you think of it. But still, you know, it's it's not one of those small little. Oh, I slapped you. You slapped me. You know, you you stole my thing. Uh, you ate my food. Not that type of a thing. Obviously, Cora is not going to come with that type of a problem towards you. He she came here. He's ask. She's asking for your help. Because there is a reason, she's the avatar, she's here for, like, you know, like, definitely because this is like a world-threatening situation or something. So him not helping her out here, I feel like that was a bad move for his part. I can understand, as I said, I can understand he cannot just move his army like that. He's the president and he is, like, you know, he, you know, he's supposed to be a lot careful of, of these kind of things. Like, it can go into a political whole situation and... But still you know like yeah and he says like oh i have a thing to keep my people like you know protected and all that that's all well and good i can understand that i'm pretty sure he himself is also pretty afraid of the situation like what would happen if like you know the city somehow gets involved in this and Unala gets them but the thing here is like Korra is here because this is actually threatening the whole world if you just sit around here with your army doing nothing later on you're going to realize that the whole world is destroyed and maybe you could have prevented that if you just helped Korra out maybe you'll realize that in the future and there's no coming back from this situation Korra is here to ask for your help because this is actually threatening the world so just doing nothing and saying like oh i'm protecting my people your people are going to die eventually if you don't help Korra out it's going to happen either way so you're just delaying the whole thing you know just go out there and help Korra out and protect like you know to prevent the whole thing from happening and everyone will be safe but he's he's not understanding i think he's probably unable to uh, fathom the like you know the actual uh, uh you know like the the what do you call it the dangerous situation like he cannot fathom that it's like a dangerous situation for the whole world he's probably thinking like oh this is just something that's happening over there so i better not get involved in this i don't know i don't know what he's thinking he's seeing i like i know like i was going to say he he was probably involved with 
monologue or something but I, it seems he is a genuine guy like up, up, up until these few episodes that I've watched him he seems like a genuine guy so I don't think he he's involved with any uh you know he's not involved with Unalok I don't think so so since he seems like a genuine guy I'm just going to say he doesn't understand the actual uh problem he doesn't understand that this could actually threaten them as well so he's not moving the army that's the reason why anyways okay and then oh my god and then we go to the prison marco's you know like marco is released here's the funny thing Cora goes to him and then the whole kiss thing that happens and Cora has forgotten like so i guess he, he probably forgotten a few things before she even got her amnesia like the whole fight he forgot about it or maybe it's just kind of cloudy in her head something like that i guess so ah uh, here's the thing marco this guy he says nothing he's just like yeah sure you know just kind of looks at asami asami's pissed and obviously i really i don't i don't like this you know i'm really i feel like like marco's probably like and as a character he's okay but in this department he's the worst character of this show i really don't like him like he the way he's so wishy-washy and just does whatever the hell he wants to without even clarifying the situation you know like just asami and Korra, just like you know i feel like that they're, they're just like he, he's just jumping from one person to another without even properly saying anything like the whole thing happened with Korra. They did break up and then he got involved with Asami and I'm like, you know what? Okay, I guess they did break up this time. So it's fine. And now he like that previous day he was even saying, like, oh let's go to the dinner. I, I guess that was Asami who was saying it, but you know, like Marco was still kind of hugging her and everything. And now like here he he sees that like Cora is like you know amnesiac, so she he she doesn't remember that. And he's like, Yeah, sure, you know. And doesn't even bother the whole thing with Asami. You know what? I, I I've given up on this guy. Seriously, like I don't. I'm sure eventually again he's going to get in a fight with Korra somehow or the other, like, and they're going to break up again. I'm sure that's going to happen. And I really hope, like, like this whole Marco thing. This is annoying me now. Really annoying me. anyways um okay and then we go visit varic julie is also there with him now varic does like you know point out all the good things that happened and it is true a lot of things good things happen and we are kind of like you know moving forward because of this the whole bowling situation and everything and you know like telling like you know, kind of uh reminding cora about unalok kind of pointing it out to her and all that stuff it is i guess very kind of like you know, instigated everything so if you think of it in that way it is true he was the person who kind of uh you know like who, who was the one who was just making everything move and i guess that's good in a way now he's in prison mm. <laughs> but he's having a good time he has like a bed and everything julie's with him and he just gave Cora and everyone like a battleship whose name is also Julie so yeah <laughs> and there you go that's that very I guess by the end of it very did help them out and uh, yeah I still don't hate Varric you know like I feel like Varric is an interesting character he was kind of manipulating everyone but at the same time you know he kind of did it in a very intelligent manner and i can respect that so okay and then like you know we're in the boat the cora marco situation again and we see uh Tonrak with uh unalok they're fighting unalok freezes him and like you know kind of deals him a lot of damage Tonrak was fighting pretty well but still you know like unalok was able to get him uh and uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Tornrock after this. Let's see. Pretty sure Korra is going to reach here pretty soon. And 
hopefully he's able to he's able to save him okay now um that was episode number 11 no yeah 11 uh, let's start with episode number 12 so yeah i'll bring the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, harmonic convergence. That's the name of this episode. Okay. Ooh, that looks. A, that's a very cool ship. Oh, is okay. Why does he have? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> In the year. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he doesn't he didn't do it. Guys, really Yeah. You should apologize to uh, Asami first. Marco should do that. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get it. I'm just disappointed in Marco, you know, like that's basically it. <laughs> well, Jinora's involved, yeah. Yes, come on. <laughs> Feather. Okay, calm down, Tenzin. Distress signal. Okay. Oh no. Yep. Auton rock has been captured. Ah. Oh. Yep. Oh yeah. The dark can help. Or maybe. Let's see. Oh no, so many people. Oh, there, there she is. There's Katara. Oh. Weak! Yeah. 
yeah, she did have like on the whole thing with Ang, you know, like she does have some experience, I guess. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Then. Hmm. Maybe that'll work. Okay, Tenzin, calm down. This might work. This might work. Yeah. Okay. All right. That Nog, who's that Naga? Oh. Oh my god, these two girls are, uh, not girls, sorry, siblings. Um, no, he didn't restore balance. He just destroyed the balance. Wait, they don't know what his dad is planning. Great. God damn. Yeah. Great. What do you want? A medal? Well, I don't know. No, that is like a like. Okay, I'll talk about it later. Let's go. <laughs> Who knows, maybe they will. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, they are. Well, nothing you can do about it now, just you need to dodge everything. <clears throat> All right, come on, bowling. Let's go. You're earth bending. Ooh. <laughs> Hold tight, bowling. Oh, damn. Okay, there you go. Wow. <laughs> nice. Wait, what are those met? No. Oh, those are bombs. Okay. Good. Okay. Oh. Oh my god! Yo! What's the name? Oogie, I think. <laughs> nice. Oh, 
Okay, don't fall. Don't fall. Oh, okay. Oh, oh no. Oh my god, the, the plane is going to crash. Or maybe not. How is he balancing himself? <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, Eska and Death Sun, they just saw. <laughs> well, Bolin is in trouble now. Oh my god. Do you have parachutes? No. Bolin, you better run. Bolin. Okay. Ah. Oh no, wait, who's that? What the? The ally or enemy? Okay, never mind, enemies. Yep, they're enemies. Oh my god. Oh god, everyone got captured. Yep. And Escandes now here. Yeah, shut up. What? Are you stupid? <sighs> oh, great. I <laughs> Yeah, apparently he doesn't care. They're not happy about this, I think. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, whoa! Um, are you here to make friends? Maybe he's here to make friends, no? Just give him a little... I, I thought this was gonna... Okay. Woo! The spirit is like, ah, oh, you wanna fight? Alright, it's a fight you'll get. Oh! Oh, 
Oh, no, 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 move! Maybe he just wanted to make friends, you know, and you started punching him. What the hell, Boomy? Oh. Oh, maybe, maybe a new little music will do. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're here. Okay. Yeah, we have a transport. We have an, a good puncher, at least. He can punch the spirit. And we have a music player. And Pabu for moral support. Ah. Oh, maybe they'll listen. Maybe they'll listen if Bolin says. Gonna regret it later on. Oh, oh, oh infiltration mission or damn <laughs> wait they're not happy with the whole spirit thing so wow <laughs> okay all the spirits are music lovers i can see Oh, 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 they're getting a little bit too close, I think. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, get, get in them, those. Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> My god! Oh! Oh my! <laughs> it's just flattening the whole place! <laughs> wow! Oh, whoa, that was an entrance. Quick. Yes, there you go. <laughs> you did save us, you know. Yeah, like we have to trust him after this, you know. No, nah, no, nah, we have to trust him after this. No, he, he did. Oh god. No, uh, you're not in the yeah. Okay. Alright, let's go. Hmm. 
Probably. Okay. Yeah, like if the harmonic convergence happens, we'll die either way. So you know, the spirits will. Yeah. Hmm. There they are. All right, come on, Boomy, your flute, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Yes, let's go. Okay. All right, they're doing it. Ooh, nice combo. Oh no, harmonic convergence. Uh, I think we're a bit too late. Yep, we were a little bit too late. Come on. Oh. oh! There you go, your wise father, you know, did something. Yeah, and Raiko, what now? I want to see his face now, you know? I really want to see his face. My god. Okay, yep, there he is. Well, there you go. Okay, well now, one thing I can like we're almost at the end of this uh, book, you know. I think two more episodes are left. Um, I have to say one thing. This uh, this book was extremely predictable. Like, like this is so predictable. Like everyone knew this was going to happen. Like they were somehow able, wouldn't be able to stop the harmonic convergence. Batu was going to come out, and yeah, everyone knew this was coming, and that's what happened. And I feel like. Unalak is probably one of the worst villains I've ever seen. You know, like, like at least in book one, uh, the whole thing with Tarlock and Amon, uh, they, it was like, there was like a secret, not secret, but like, there was like a um, twist in the end. And there was like an interesting development both of them had. They, both of them had like an interesting story and everything. Now, I don't know if they're going to show us very, uh, like, you know, like Unalak's story in the last two episodes or every, anything like that. Uh, but up until now, Unalak is one of the most boring villains I've ever seen. He's one of those cut, copy, paste, like, you know, cliched villains who just wants power. And I feel like this is where book two really fails. It fails to provide a, an interesting villain. And I've heard a lot of people say like book two is like the worst out of the all the four books, you know, in uh, Korra. So if this really is like, you know, the worst, you know, like of the four seasons, 
I'm kind of glad about it because now that we've seen the worst, we're probably going to get better stuff in season three and season four as well. So as I said, like in, in book one, I, I was quite entertained. I really liked book one. Book two kind of dropped completely and then like there, there's like two episodes in the middle and the whole like, you know, origin of Avatar story, which kind of shot up, like, you know, my rating in my book, it just completely crashed through the roof. It was even better than uh, book one, the, those two episodes. And then the episode with Iroh was really good. And then it's again falling, you know, and like the story is... Uh, I guess it's entertaining. It's interesting. There are a few things that I really liked. You know, the whole bowling situation. I love Varric. Varric is another character that I really like. Um, you know, because it's kind of unpredictable. Like, out of all these characters, Varric is, I guess, the most unpredictable character in the book, too. If you think of it in that way. And, like, on, on all the other departments, first Korra's rebellious, like, you know, like, you know, thing that she did all that stuff and then Marco's crap that he does you know just Marco just jumping from Korra to Asami then Korra to Asami this thing and what else like and Beifong just not even participating in any way in this book at all she's just there as a figure piece or whatever you call them like figurehead I think that's what you call she's just there just standing kind of commenting one or two lines without contributing anything i feel like those two cops who were bad had more lines than Beifong had in this book and um like everything's a mess like this book is i can see why a lot of people doesn't like this the main villain is just boring you know it's he's just one of the most boring villains as i said i don't know if they're going to give some more character development to him in the final two episodes but up until this time we don't even know why he like you know like i guess he just wanted power and his 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 reasoning is just boring one of those like you know villains that say like oh i want power you were wrong avatar uh one brought chaos i'm like what chaos did he bring like do you like you know is your dictionary like you know just uh, wrong or something like i i feel like the definition of chaos is something that you are trying to do not the thing that Juan did. Like in that line, he says like, what did he say? Like Juan tried to bring uh, balance, but he wasn't able to do that. He said something like that, I think. I'm like, what the hell are you saying? Are you drunk? W what you are doing here is the definition of chaos. What Juan did was the definition of balance. And you are saying that Juan didn't bring game, like, you know, balance. And you are better than him. Like what? Like what, what? What type of a reasoning is this? Like he's, he's just a power hungry character who just at first decided to screw over his brother by just betraying him and just, you know, like, yeah, betraying him. First he decided to do that and he was still not content with that. Now he wants the uh, power of the spirits. So he's doing this and like, you know, releasing uh, Vatu. And I'm like, yeah, like... The, the worst character, like, you know, the, the, the most boring character, I feel like Unalak is, like, the one. As a villain, he is just bad. He's just plain bad. Like, I don't like him at all. Like, like, we're not, we're supposed to hate villains. And we do hate him for a different reason. He's, you know, he, he doesn't, like, I don't know. I feel like this, this thing, like, Unalak could have been, you know, done in a better way as a character he could have been done in a better way and i feel like there's just nothing to him he just like it's just one of those cliched villains that just wants power and it's like yeah i'm going to rule the world that type of a character and yeah like as i said like you know the whole thing with tarlock we could understand there's like a reasoning behind everything he kind of changed because you know of his brother and his dad like there was a reasoning behind everything and the reason why he did everything was in a way you could say to you know like like to pro not protect but some way it, it was it was it was still believable what he did and everything there was like a reason behind it and the whole thing with amon as well there was a reasoning behind everything and then while unlock has like you know his actions that he's doing has no reason he's just playing bad he's just doing this just because of his own selfish 
thing and he just believes that yeah if the spirits and the humans lived like you know together in the same world it would be a better world he just thinks of it like that and he's like yeah i'm going to become the what dark avatar or something like what okay i guess All right this episode this episode was a lot of like you know action and everything we can see at the beginning we see Korra kind of training last minute training you know she's, she's kind of getting ready for the battle final battle while Marco is dilly dallying about the whole situation and you know as I said like you know I'm just disappointed in Marco he's like you know he, he's one character I really do not like I'm, I, I really feel disappointed about he he has such an interesting i have to say like you know as a character and everything as a yeah he's he's okay he's it's fine but in this department in the uh Korra and asami department i'm just disappointed and i wouldn't like i'm i wouldn't say anything else like like he he just just that wishy washy character who just I don't know how he's going to say that, you know, like the whole thing with Asami. I don't know how he's going to break that to Korra, and I don't know how Korra is going to react to it. And I, you know, what I would be best. I really hope that Korra, if I'm sure he's she's going to get to know the whole situation later on. I really hope after listening to that, Korra just dumps him. I really want that. You know? I really hope Korra dumps him, and then. Asami also dumps him. Yeah, I, I really want that. I don't, I don't think Marco is fit to be with either of them. That's, that's just it. I really hope he got, gets dumped by both of them. And he just, just like, lives alone. Like, you know, he just, just becomes alone. And obviously he'll have his brother with him. But you know, like in, in the you know, love romantic department, he just, he just stays alone. I really wish that that happens. And I'm, it's just too disappointing, Marco. All right. Um, now then we get to the water tribe, southern water tribe. Katara's there. Katara's trying to help everyone out, and Jinora is being kept alive. You know, it's kind of slipping. She's slipping, kind of, and it's, we have to do it quickly to get her back. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. Here's the thing, I think this is one thing that Tenzin is kind of like a bad habit of him. Um, he kind of always is so serious, you know, like he doesn't listen to anyone, even especially when there's like stressful situation. This situation here, we know um, Bumi kind of jokes around and stuff, but I'm sure he's also concerned about like, you know, Jinora. So he was also trying to help them out, you know, he was like, like, I guess his, <laughs> the way he was saying it, it was kind of weird he was kind of saying like oh like back like you know in one of my adventures this happened and like saying unbelievable stuff and everything and i guess that kind of kind of made things in angry but you know like he like everyone after listening to his plan like oh go from the top everyone's like yeah that will work while Tenzin was like oh you know like you're always joking around brother this is not the time <laughs> But yeah, like he came up with a good plan. Just go from top. Use Ugi. I think that was the name of the Sky Bison. Yeah, Ugi and the plane. Asami is going to drive. Marco will be there. Bolin will be there. And they're going to distract them. While Katara and their crew with Ugi is going to just jump in. Using, uh, taking advantage of that distraction. And they did that. Tried to do that. Unfortunately, they were ready for them. They just started blasting, you know, like, like started bending ice and everything towards them, attacking them. And the spirits were also there. The spirits were attacking Korra's, like, you know, and Ugi, all of them. So it was a mess. They did kind of cause a little bit of damage, Marco's fire bending and everything, but it did not work. By the end of it, Ugi also kind of got infected by the the the, the spirit, and <laughs> Bolin kind of jumped off Ugi with the with the spirit dark spirit and uh, which was kind of which helped us out later on you know and uh, yeah they got captured um oh my god uh Tonrak, yeah i think that was his name what was that he got beaten up we can see like you know he was being beaten up and everything and they were brought to them just tied their hands were all tied and eska and desna were also there unalok came in unalok is like yeah first row seat you're going to see 
what we're, we're going to do now as i said like you know unalak is his reasoning that makes no sense he's saying like like here we go the avatar hasn't brought balance only chaos you call yourself the bridge between the two worlds but there shouldn't be a bridge we should live together as one like it, it sounds good nice but but that's not how the, it works like spirits are supposed to be in the spirit world humans are supposed to be in the human world like what is he trying to do like he's saying like oh we should live together like what like i doubt spirits will be happy just and, and we have a few spirits here you know just kind of just here kind of here and there so like that's the thing now his as i said his reasoning makes no sense he says like the avatar brought chaos i'm like what chaos what chaos did he bring we've been living in peace for the past few years you know there was obviously the whole thing with the fire nation i guess you know but ang stopped it and <laughs> but but other than that everything with the spirit department everything has been peaceful and he's saying like ah he was not a bridge there shouldn't be a bridge we should all live together and all like just spewing nonsense completely i don't know and so basically he wants to live with the spirits i guess like but but as i said like you know it, it's they're supposed to be in the spirit world while humans are supposed to be in the human world i, I think one said this like this should never like you know uh, we should never go to the spirit world no what did one say it said something like that like you know they are not supposed to come here so i'll be you know like completely closing the portals so that it doesn't happen and i will be the bridge and but unalak disagrees i guess so okay so that's why he's going to uh you know like unleash all of these like you know spirits and during the harmonic convergence vatu is going to come back and he's like where is it yeah he's going to fuse with vatu he's like yeah i'm going to become the dark avatar or something like that desna and eska is just uh, listening to him like that now Thor tries to convince eska and desna desna is like oh our dad is the most wisest person in this world or whatever he said and i'm like yeah you're going to understand like <laughs> the whole situation it's funny like the whole situation in the spirit world where Deska, Desna got hurt, his dad didn't even look at him. He was like, ah, just, you know, like, help me out, Des Eska. Eska is the one who went and helped him out. And, like, you know, Desna, when Desna was injured and he's still kind of backing up his dad. His, your dad doesn't care about you. He, he, he just cares about Vatu at this point. He's just that type of a person. And uh, you're just like a tool for him, I guess. In a similar way to the whole Tarlock situation, it's kind of like that, I guess. All right, now everyone's just like you know, tied up. Um, Ten Tenzin is like, oh, like we've lost. But they're like, nope, our one and only hero, Boomy, is still left. He she he hasn't gotten caught. And we see Boomy's little adventure here. He kind of tames a spirit <laughs> using the flute, and he like you know like. Uh, Naga and Pabu also comes in and he takes a disguise kind of goes in there tries to control the spirits all the other spirits but it seems like that spirit was just an exception he kind of liked music a little bit that's why he got tamed by him unfortunately these spirits are not so much of a big fan of music so they just started attacking Bumi and Bumi ran away got into one of those um robot things i forgot their name automatons you call them i think <laughs> and he <laughs> the way he like you know, the, the the spirits got in it kind of started going completely crazy and it just completely flattened the whole camp and in the end he just got you know the, like he pressed the eject button i think just completely went through the uh tent and reached um our uh, our team our fan our crew eska and desna were going to do something but in came naga and just whacked them in and there you go everything's fine and as i said now from here onwards whenever boomy is going to say one of his talk about one of his adventure stories we'll have to listen to it 
because it's probably the truth you know he like i guess luck is with him you know he's just lucky and <laughs> yeah oh boy now okay so then we kind of go i kind of have another different plan we go to the portal um <clears throat> tonrak he he's like you know he, he and um asami they go back to the village like so that katara could help them and now they kind of broke up into two groups where Kora will be one who's going to stop the like, you know close the portal um mako and bolin is going to fight unalok and uh, yeah i think that was the plan and tenzin what's where's tenzin what's like i forgot what he's going to do wait oh okay yeah yeah tenzin uh, uh tenzin um kaya and boomy they're going to save uh jinora yeah that's what they're going to do i was like yeah what are they going to okay there you go so that was like the plan and the kind of the like, teamwork the teamwork was pretty well we could see like you know bolin and marco just stopping unalak while uh cora just trying to get the portal to close fortunately i think like it was time up the harmonic convergence happened vatu is out and oh boy we are in trouble now as i said this was extremely predictable as we can see like you know everyone knew vatu is going to somehow come out and we're probably going to have like a big battle between rava vatu like you know like Korra. Korra is going to go into the avatar state this that and there will be a huge fight everyone knew that what's going to happen and that's why i'm not surprised vatu is out like yeah everyone knew that he's going to come out eventually so yeah that was it so as I said, like, you know, my whole, I'm, I'm going to talk about this, like, you know, book, this season in detail next episode, next week, uh, when it will end. Um, I have a few, as I said, I kind of said most of the things that I wanted to say. This, this book is interesting. It's entertaining. Um, <clears throat> but I wouldn't say it's good. You know, it's extremely predictable. Uh, the main villain has, I don't like him at all. He's just boring, plain boring. And there's a lot of other problems, like the whole Korra situation, Mark was doing his own thing, and just, it's just, yeah, just mediocre, I would say. I would use that word here. This, this, this season is mediocre. And um, I'm glad that it is mediocre because from the others I've heard, as I said, that this is the worst out of all the four seasons, so... I'm 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 kind of happy that we will probably get a better story next season in season 3 and season 4 so yeah anyways that's it thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to the legend of korra book 2 episode number 11 and 12 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything else you want to let me know and I'll check them out so yeah I'll be back next week with the final two episodes of The Legend of Korra, book two. See you guys then. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.